Chapter 18 is on entropy, which is a topic related to energy. So the chapter title also includes free energy, which is a particular type of energy, and equilibrium we're going to talk about at the very end of this chapter, the relationship between equilibrium and entropy and free energy, how they all tie in together. The first section, 18.1, is on the three laws of thermodynamics. Some of this stuff we've already talked about at other times. Uh, in 161, we talked a little bit about thermodynamics in Chapter 6. And if you've taken other science classes before, you've probably heard some, if not all, of these laws. The first law of thermodynamics, which we, talk, we did talk about in Chapter 6, is that the energy of the universe is constant. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed uh, is the, a variation of the first law. The second law, which is the law of thermodynamics that we focus on in this chapter, and the second law states that all systems move toward a state of disorder or randomness. So this just means that when things are left alone, when energy is not being pumped into a system, when it's just being left alone to, to do its own thing, the system is going to become more and more disordered or more and more random. And it's really easy to find all kinds of analogies of this in the everyday world. Like, for example, if you don't clean your house, if you leave it alone, don't put any energy into it, your house moves toward a state of total disorder and randomness and chaos and messiness. And if you think about it, really anything that occurs naturally is always moving towards uh, randomness and disorder. Things don't just naturally put themselves together, line themselves up, put themselves away, order themselves, whatever. Uh, this is not to say that the world cannot ever have order. It just requires that we put energy into the natural world in order for there to be order. The third law, which we don't study in Gen Chem, but we have mentioned it, we talked about it, several times in 161. At zero Kelvin, molecular motion stops. And there is no disorder. So everything is perfectly um, ordered. The substances and matter would, would all be in solid state at that temperature, are all uh, in their solid state, in their, their crystal lattice or whatever. They're all perfectly ordered. There's no disorder or flaw or mistake to, to matter at this zero Kelvin temperature. A lot of times we say that matter would exist at zero Kelvin as a perfect crystal. Perfect because it has no disorder, it has no flaw, everything is great. There's also another law of thermodynamics, which is referred to as the zero-with law. Uh, it's not one that, that you usually hear about, and I can't remember off the top of my head if, if Ching has it in the textbook or not. Wow, I really spelled that wrong. Perfect. There you go. The zero-with law is a lot of times referred to as the thermometer law. And one of the reasons that you don't hear it talked about a lot in classrooms is because it's really blatantly obvious and it almost seems silly to even write it down. But the, the thermometer law or the zero-with law goes like this. It says if you have 
if you have two objects, object A and object B, and you take the temperature of the two of them, so the temperature of object A, and you take the temperature of object B, and let's just say theoretically that those two temperatures are equal to each other. So we'll say object A is 10 degrees and object B is 10 degrees. And then let's say you bring in a third object, C, and the temperature of object C is equal to the temperature of object B. So there, temp the um, object C is also 10 degrees. And so the zeroth law of thermodynamics then says that the temperature of object A must be equal to the temperature of object C, even though you never compared the two of them side by side directly. Of course, you don't need to. Um, this is called the, therm the thermometer law because, you know, I guess thermometers are the object B in this case, the things that are measuring different temperatures. And if a thermometer tells you that your beaker of water is 10 degrees C and that same thermometer tells you that a flask of ethanol is also 10 degrees C, you can make the assumption that the temperature of the, the two are the same. So, you know, that's pretty deep stuff. Um, I'm joking. That's all there is in section 18.1. It's pretty small. I do want you to know, to be able to state these four laws of thermodynamics, so write a study question for yourself that will remind you to, to learn them and to be able to identify them and restate them on your test.